इंट्रोडक्शन ग्लोबल वर्ल्ड एंड एपिडेमियोलॉजिकल ट्रायल क्लिनिकल फीचर्स डायग्नोसिस एंड ट्रीटमेंट प्रिवेंशन एंड रिसेंट अपडेट्स इन दी एंड learning outcomes by the end of this presentation participants should be able to describe brown worm hook worm and big worm along with their levels of prevention uh escherichias hook worm and big worm are parasitic worms they are known as soil transmitted handmaids because the infection spreads through contaminated soil first uh of all i would discuss this brown worm which is also known as escherichia lumbricoides This is case presentation. A 12-year-old boy from a periphery of the hub was admitted into the emergency department of Mayo Hospital Lahore with acute colicky perimeral abdominal pain, not referred to other signs, vomiting and constipation for three days. On physical examination, he had pale and appeared poorly nourished. His oral temperature was 37.5 degrees centigrade. BP was 100 by 60. Pulse was regular with rate of 120 beats per minute, and respiratory rate was 35 per minute. Abdominal examination revealed abdominal tenderness and rigidity in the central and mid abdomen. There was no organomegaly. Auscultation revealed a silent abdomen or minimal peristalsis. Rest of the systemic examination was unremarkable. At the time of admission, a bottle investigation. were done the rbc uh, count was 3.5 uh, 4 to 3.8 and hemoglobin level was 10 g per 100 ml the tlc was raised and eosinophils were increased abdominal ultrasonography demonstrated parallel paired lines like railway tracks in the intestinal lumen that was suggestive of worms the boy came from a very low socio economic status family his father was a farmer and all the family helped the father usually spending all the day working the fields they usually ate vegetables from the field without washing the boy had a history of pica uh, escherichia lumbricoides infection was suspected as the patient's mother gave a history of expulsion of one very big worm from the ear shortly before coming to the hospital introduction escherichia lumbricoides is the largest nematode or round worm parasitizing in the human intestine it is an intestinal worm found in the small intestine of man mainly in the jejunum or upper part of ileum they are common in children than in adults and as many as 500 to 5000 adult worms may inhabit a single host global burden escherichia lumbricoides infection happens all over the world the eggs from the parasite are passed in human feces can contaminate the soil the eggs are virus burst in warm humid areas and must go in the soil before they can infect others and most cases occur in tropical and subtropical areas of asia sub saharan africa and the america the global burden of escherichia is 2019 In nineteen twenty, in twenty nineteen, was seven five four thousand daily adjusted life years and a total of twenty ninety deaths. An estimated eight thousand eight hundred seven million to one point two billion people in the world are impacted with escherichia lumbricoides, which is this condition is also called escherichiasis. Epidemiological features: Agent Escherichia lumbricoides live in the lumen of small intestine, where it moves freely. Sexes are separate. Female measures twenty to thirty-five centimeter length, and the males are a little bit smaller than females, that is twenty to thirty centimeter. Reservoir of infection is man. Infective material: feces containing the fertilized eggs. Host infection rates are high in children. They uh, are the most important disseminators of infection. Adults seem to acquire some resistance. There is a high degree of host parasite tolerance. Brown worms rob man of his food and may possibly compete for vitamin A in the intestine. So they contribute to malnutrition, especially in children who may show growth retardation. Environment: Escherichias is a soil transmitted helminth. The eggs remain viable in soil for years under favorable conditions. A low temperature inhibits the development of eggs. Clay soil is the most favorable for the development of Escherichias eggs in contrast to moist porous soil for those of hookworm. Human habits: Seeding of the soil by Escherichias eggs takes place by human habit of indiscriminate open air defecation. It is the most important factor responsible for the widespread distribution of Escherichias in the world.
period of communicability it is until all fertile females are destroyed and stools are negative incubation period 18 days to several weeks this is the uh, life cycle uh, of escheri slumbery birds in which we can see that uh, there is ingestion of embryonated eggs uh, and then these uh, are hash uh, uh, then hash larva enter circulation and migrate to lungs and then larva uh, larvae are coughed up and swallowed re entering the git and so the maturation proceeds in the small intestine clinical features many people show no symptoms there is lung phase which is also called escheries pneumonitis which is uh, presented as coughing wheezing shortness of breath and it is usually uh, not diagnosed then comes intestinal phase uh, which is presented by way to severe abdominal pain nausea vomiting weight loss malnutrition diarrhea and bloody stool and complications uh, they are gallbladder obstruction leading to gallstones intestinal blockage and perforation and pancreatitis diagnosis the diagnosis depends on the identity of uh, identifying worms and or eggs the stool examination which is done for seeing the adult worms or eggs the sputum examination for seeing larva during migration in the lung and eosinophilia it is a, uh, as a, uh, serves as an indicator on parasitic infection but microscopic identification of eggs in the stool is the most common method and is the gold standard method for diagnosing intestinal escheriasis this is a picture of uh, escheriasis eggs treatment anti helminthes uh, medications that is uh, these are the drugs that remove parasitic worms from the body such as albendazole and imbendazole are the drug of choice for treatment of this infection regardless of the species of worm infections are generally treated for 1 to 3 days and these drugs are effective when appear to have very few side effects prevention and control the best way to prevent people from getting escheriasis from humans or pigs is to always do the following avoid ingesting soil that may be contaminated with human feces including where human fecal matter waste matter or pig manure is used to fertilize crops wash your hands with soap and water before handling food wash uh, your hands with soap and water after touching or handling animals uh, cleaning them and or handling their manure teaching children the importance of washing hands to prevent infection and surprise uh, supervise uh, children around pigs or other animals ensuring that they do not put unwashed hands in their mouth wash peel or cook all raw vegetables and fruits before eating particularly those that have been grown in soil that has been fertilized with manure transmission of escheries uh, infection to others in a community setting can be prevented by not defecating outdoors effective sewage disposal system then i hope warm this is the uh, second topic of my presentation case presentation a 50 Four year old male was admitted because of having suffered from progressive watery diarrhea for 12 days. He had no history of diabetes, mitosis, hypertension, heart disease, organ transplantation, or malignancy. After admission, he still complained of diarrhea along with anorexia. Despite medical treatment, the laboratory examination showed leukocytosis with eosinophilia, and stool examination by the concentration meter was negative four times. When a sigmoidoscopy was performed as a part of an explorative survey, a single protruding mass consisting, uh, if a uh, moving uh, adult hookworm was found the fifth stool examination by the concentration method identified hookworm over the patient was treated with oral mepentazole 100 mg twice a day for 3 days and the diarrhea and synophilia subsided after this treatment introduction uh, this hookworm is widely distributed in tropical and subtropical countries and it is one of a uh, small intestinal nematodes it is the very important cause of iron deficiency anemia and it is named so because the anterior end of the adult worm is bent and it belongs to family ankylostomatidae and these are it consists of two important human species that is ankylostoma duodenale and nicator americanus global burden uh, it is almost eradicated from europe and the usa hookworm infection is still seen in warm moist climates in tropical and subtropical regions of asia africa central and south america and the south pacific as we can see in this picture <clears throat> 
worldwide bookworms infected an estimated 576 to 740 million people almost most of those affected are asymptomatic some may experience anemia and other complications agent adult worms live in small intestine mainly jejunum where they attach themselves to the villi um, Males measure 8 to 11 uh, millimeter and females 10 to 13 millimeter in length with dorsally curved anterior end, as we can see in this picture, due to which they are called hookworms. Eggs are passed in feces in thousands. Reservoir man is the only important reservoir of human hookworm infection. Infective material again, it is spaces containing the ova of hookworm. However, the major source of infection is the soil contaminated with infected larva. And period of infectivity uh, lasts as long as a person harbors the parasite. Age and sex. All ages in both sexes are susceptible to infection in endemic areas. The highest incidence is found in the age group of 15 to 25 years. Nutrition. Studies indicate that malnutrition is a predisposing factor. The chronic disabling disease does not occur in the otherwise healthy individual who is well nourished and whose iron intake is adequate. Host parasite balance. In endemic areas, the inhabitants develop a host parasite balance in which the worm load is limited. They harbor the parasite without manifesting clinical signs and symptoms. This delicate balance may be upset by malnutrition and intercurrent infections. Uh, this is uh, the life cycle of hookworm, in which there is in, uh, ingestion, uh, sorry, uh, it is uh, transmit X uh, in the uh, feces, they uh, convert it into the rapiform larvae, which has, hatches and develop to filiform larvae in the environment. Then the filiform larvae penetrates the skin. So uh, then a larvae exit circulation uh, in the lungs and they are cuffed up and swallowed. So adults, they live in the small intestine. Uh, they are uh, so they are transmitted to the skin. If a, a person uh, uh, walking with bare foot in the soil contaminated with the feces and larvae, they're most likely to get this infestation. Occupation. It is to be expected that hookworm infection will have a higher prevalence in agriculture than in town workers and in many tropical countries. It is an occupational disease of the farming community. Clinical features of hookworm disease. These are uh, local eczema, macules, papules, uh, which is also known as ground itch, and it is due to cutaneous invasion and subcutaneous migration of larva. Then uh, there are pulmonary symptoms, which are bronchitis, pneumonitis, and eosinophilia. And these are due to migration of larvae through lung, bronchi, and trachea. And we have GIT symptoms, which are anorexia, epigastric pain, GIT hemorrhage. And hematologic features are iron deficiency, anemia, hypoproteinemia, edema, edema cardiac failure. Diagnosis and treatment. Diagnosis, the st gold standard method for diagnosing the presence of hookworm is by identifying hookworm eggs in a stool sample using a microscope. Treatment, uh, it is uh, through um, albendazole and mebendazole. These are the drugs of choice for treatment of hookworm infections and they are generally treated for one to three days. The recommended medications are effective and they have very few side effects. Iron supplements, they are also prescribed if the infected person has anemia because hookworm infestation is a very important cause of microcytic anemia. So we usually give iron supplements along with these antihelminthic medications. Prevention and control. The best way to avoid hookworm infection is not to walk barefoot in areas where hookworm is common and where there may be human fecal contamination of the soil. Also avoid other skin contact with such soil and avoid ingesting it. Infection can also be prevented by not defecating outdoors in the effective sewage disposal systems. Uh, then the last topic is waveform, which is also called Stracuris stracuri. Case presentation, a seven-year-old boy was brought to the emergency department from one of the remote areas of Sydney with complaints of increased stool frequency, about 12 to 14 stools per day, along with mucus and blood in stool, followed by some protrusion of penile mass. Laboratory tests showed mild eosinophilia and blood test. The patient submitted a fecal sample, which was concentrated and examined following standard laboratory protocols. There were no worms in the feces, but the examination with iodine wet mount showed the presence of yellowish brown axe with two polar plugs that resemble tracheuris. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> 
the average size of eggs was 90 uh, micrometer in length based on these findings this case was diagnosed as cricuris tricura infection uh, global burner. Most of the disease burden is seen in tropical climates, especially in Asia and less often in Africa and South America. It is also found in rural parts of the Southeast US. It is estimated that worldwide there are between 450 million to 1 million active cases with most diagnosed in children. It is thought there is partial protective immunity that develops with age. Worldwide, almost half of the 5 billion people that live in developing countries are infected with at least one swine transmit has been infection in 10% with two or more helmet species. And young boys tend to be most affected as they are likely to play outside and exhibit pica behavior. Uh, if this is the introduction uh, that uh, wigworm infection, also known as tercariasis, is an infection of the large intestine caused by a parasite uh, called Tricuris tricuri. This parasite is commonly known as gliform because it resembles a whip. It is the third most common soil transmitted helminths. And it, this infection can develop after ingesting water or dirt contaminated with feces containing wigworm parasites. This is the morphology of adult worms. That is, it resembles like a whip. The anterior three, uh, th uh, three fifths of the end is a very thin hair like, and the posterior two fifths is thick and stout, resembling the handle of a whip. The anterior ends penetrate the mucosal layer and remain deeply embedded into it. The incubation period it uh, period from ingestion of eggs to appearance of eggs in stool uh, is 60 to 90 days. Uh, this is the uh, life cycle of waveform. Here we can see that the embryonated eggs are passed with the stool. In the stool, the eggs develop into two, stills, uh, two cell stage and they become infective in 15 to 30 days. And after ingestion uh, of these embryonated eggs, they hatch in the small intestine and release larvae. The mature establish themselves the adults in the colon and the adult worms, they live in the cecum and ascending colon. The adult worms are fixed in that location with the anterior portion threaded into the mucosa. These are the clinical features. The, uh, it uh, ranges from asymptomatic to physical weakness, anemia, stunted growth, cognitive deficit, stool frequency, 12 uh, or more uh, per day, nocturnal stooling, and tricuris dysentery syndrome. It is a very important complication of this tricuriasis. And then we have tricuris colitis, rectal prolapse. Tricuris dysentery syndrome can be found in children. Uh, and is seen when there is very high warm burden. This often leads to diarrhea, tenesmus, iron deficiency, anemia, and poor growth. The poor growth is typically secondary to poor nutrition, consequently causes cognitive delay. Diagnosis. Diagnosis of trichuriasis is made by microscopic examination of stools. The, this is the characteristic lemon-shaped eggs with clear opercular at both ends and that are readily apparent. When endoscopy, protoscopy, or clonoscopy is done for other indications, wiggling adult worms may be seen protruding into the bowel lumen. Treatment, again, it is uh, through albendazole and mebendazole or ivermectin. Mebendazole is given, uh, the uh, it, its suggested dose is 100 mg twice a day for three days, or albendazole is 1200 to 400 mg twice a day for three days. And mebendazole uh, has been shown to be more effective and is considered first-time treatment. Prevention and control. Avoid contact with soil that may be contaminated with human feces, including the human fecal matter, uh, that is uh, night soil used to fertilize crops, washing hands with soap and warm water before handling food, teaching children the importance of washing hands to prevent infection, washing, peeling, or cooking raw vegetables and food before eating, particularly that have been grown in soil that has been fertilized with manure. And transmission of infection to others can be prevented by not defecating outdoors and effective sewage disposal system. Anti helminth treatment in pregnancy, lactation, and pediatric patients. Albendazole. In pregnancy, data on the use of albendazole in pregnant women are limited, though the available evidence suggests there is no difference in congenital abnormalities in the children of women who were accidentally treated with albendazole during mass prevention campaigns compared with those that were not. And in mass prevention campaigns for which WHO has determined the benefit of treatment outweighs the risk, and WHO allows use of albendazole in second and third trimester 
trimester of pregnancy. Lactation, it is not known whether it is excreted in human milk, but albendazole should be used with caution in breastfeeding women. Pediatric patients, the safety of albendazole in children less than six years old is not certain. Studies of the use of albendazole in children as young as one year old suggest that its use is safe. According to WHO guidelines for mass prevention campaigns, albendazole can be used in children as young as one year old, and many children less than six years old have been treated in these campaigns with albendazole as a reduced dose. Mebendazole again, WHO allows its use in second and third trimester of pregnancy. And WHO classifies Mebendazole as compatible with breastfeeding allows the use uh, in lactating women. Pediatric patients, there is limited data in children aged two years and younger, but Mebendazole is listed as an intestinal antihelminthic medicine as in WHO model list of essential medicines for children intended for the use of children up to 12 years of age. Preventive chemotherapy for soil transmitted helminths. In developing countries, probes at high risk for soil transmitted helminths are often treated without a proper stool examination, prior stool examination. Treating in this way is called preventive treatment or preventive chemotherapy. The high risk groups are identified by WHO are preschool and school age children, women of childbearing age, that is, in pregnant women in second, third trimester, lactating women, and adults in occupation where there is high risk of having infection. School children are often treated through school visits programs and preschool children pregnant women at visits to health clinics now what is mass drug administration the soil transported helminths and other uh, neglected tropical disease. These soil transported helminths, these are also ne uh, called uh, neglected tropical disease. They all are sometimes treated through mass drug administration. Since the drugs are used, uh, used are safe, expensive, or donated, entire risk groups, which I've already just discussed, are uh, offered preventive treatment. Mass drug administration are conducted periodically. That is often annually, commonly with drug distributors who go door to door, multiple neglected tropical diseases often treated at the same time using these MDS. WHO recommended medicines. These are albendazole and mebendazole, which are very effective, inexpensive, easy to administer by non-medical personnel. They have been through extensive safety testing and have been used in millions of people with few and minor side effects. Recent updates. Global target. There are six to 2030 global target for soil transmitted helminth cases. Achieve and maintain elimination of soil transmitted helminths morbidity in preschool and school age children. Reduce the number of tablets needed in preventive chemotherapy for STH. Increase domestic financial support uh, to preventive chemotherapy. Establish an efficient STH control program in adolescent pregnant and lactating women. Establish an efficient stronger lidosis control program in school age children. And ensure universal access to at least basic sanitation and hygiene by 2013 STH endemic areas. This is the uh, article uh, titled as Yin and Yang of Soil uh, of Human Soil Transmitted Helminths Infection. The highlights of this uh, article are that Hukwam Hukwam experiences represent a major STA that infect humans. Anti helminths drug do not offer long term protection, so vaccines are urgently needed but none are yet available. A major challenge to vaccine development is the parasite's ability to modulate immunity. The immunoregulatory progress of STH reside within their molecular moieties. So STH immunoregulatory molecules are investigated as novel biologics for treating inflammatory diseases. Advances in vaccine development for human trichuriasis. Despite the implementation of mass drug administration, uh, this trichuris trichuria infection remains challenging to control due to the low efficacy of current drug as well as high rates of post-treatment reinfection. Thus, development of a vaccine that would induce protective immunity and reduce infection rate or community fecal egg output is essential. But the hurdles for hip, uh, human webworm vaccine development include the lack of suitable vaccine antigen targets and uh, animal models for human trichuris trichuria infection. Uh, this is a survey, a baseline survey report of soil transported helminths prevalence in Pakistan, uh, which followed WHO guidelines and used the uh, Sentinel school method and ecological zones to determine prevalence. Uh, 
According to it, um, this is the table which is showing the individual province wise uh, prevalence of uh, uh, Boko Round one and Wipom. We can see that much of the southern region of Pakistan is free of STH, with the notable exception, southwestern Sindh. Uh, uh, centered around the Karachi area and extending into a limited area in southeastern Balochistan. Uh, so, uh, STH is mostly confined to northern areas of the country with the highest prevalence focused in the area around Rawalpindi and Islamabad. We can also see in this picture, this is a distribution of helm infection ground worm. We can see that it is more prevalent in the Rawalpindi and Islamabad region and the hip uh, whipworm infestation, it is more prevalent in the uh, KPK region. While helminth infection, it is a very least uh, prevalence with 1% one, one prevalence all over the Pakistan. Now coming on to MCQs. MCQ number one, an eight year old boy was brought to pediatric OPD from a very remote area of Punjab with complaints of anorexia, nausea, vomiting along with abdominal pain. On examination, there were rashes all over body. Her mother also complains his issue of pica, which of the following could be the causative agent for this condition. Ascaris lumbricoid, Niketa, Americans, uh, and Calistoma duodenal, Tricuris, Tricuri. Mm. Yes, A is the right option. Uh, MCQ number two. Each of the following statements concerning Ascaris lumbricoid is correct, except Ascaris lumbricoid is one of the largest nematodes. Uh, it can cause pneumonia. Both dogs and cats are intermediate host of Ascaris lumbricoid. Ascaris lumbricoid is transmitted by ingestion of eggs. Uh, C? Yes, C is the right option because dogs and cats, they are not the intermediate host of uh, this parasite. Which of the following is not correct regarding soil transmitted helminth infestation in pregnancy? The infection could be detrimental during pregnancy due to maternal anemia. The treatment should be withheld till delivery because of adverse effects on baby. The treatment can be given in last trimester of pregnancy. The benefits of treatment are greater than adverse effects caused by worm infestation. C? No, uh, B is the right option. Uh, this option is not correct regarding this infestation pregnancy because treatment we can give the treatment in second and third trimester. MCQ number four, which of the following helminths enters the body of a man through the skin of his feet if he walks barefoot in the contaminated soil? As caries and cardiostoma, schistosoma, area. A? So B is the right option. And Carlostoma duodenale and Niketa Americans, these two are the hookworms, and they enter the body of a man through the skin of his feet. So it is uh, more uh, common in farmers and gardeners working in the contaminated soil. MCQ number five. Round one infection is the most common type of worm infection in the world, mostly affecting tropical and subtropical regions. Which of the following tests is used to diagnose round one infection? Vidal test, pap smear test, gravidex test, stool test. These are, yes, these are the option. MCQ number six. Soil transmitted helminth referred to in standard, intestinal worms infected humans that are transmitted through contaminated soil, which of the following important cause of iron deficiency in human children? Pinworm, brown worm, tap worm, whip worm, hook worm. Uh, hook worm. Yes, E is the right option, hook worm. A five-year-old boy was brought to emergency department by his guardian with complaints of a mass protruding from an anus associated with pain in complete evacuation, blood and mucus, rectal discharge, and fecal incontinence. On taking history, parents said that they were living in Kachi Abadi of Lahore in a small house with no proper sewer system. Which of the following helmet could be responsible for his condition? Pin worm, brown worm, tap worm, whip worm, hook worm. The right option is D because mm -hmm. in, yes, in, these are the uh, features of uh, large intestine uh, infection. And in Wipmong, uh, it is usually presented in large intestine uh, clinical features. And the rectal prolapse is the very characteristic representation of this uh, Wipmong infestation. Uh, 
MCQ number eight. The farmers and gardeners are susceptible to hookworm infestation because of working with bare food and so having direct contact with soil. All of the following statements concerning the hookworm infection are correct except hookworm infection can cause microcytic anemia. Hookworm infection acquired by humans when filiform larvae penetrate the skin. Hookworm is caused by indicated Americans. Hookworm infestation can be diagnosed by finding the trophozoite in the stool. D. Yes, D is the right option because all soil crop and helminths, um, they are diagnosed by finding the eggs in the stool or larvae, adult larvae. MCQ number nine. In developing countries, groups at high risk for soil run helmets of infection often treated without a prior stool examination. Treating in this phase called preventive chemotherapy. All of the following are high risk groups as identified by WHO except preschool children, pregnant ladies in second and third trimester, farmers working in agriculture, lands, teenage females, school age, uh, school going children. B. D is the right option, yes. MCQ number 10. Soil transmitted helminths are among the most common infections worldwide and affect the poorest and most deprived communities. They are transmitted by eggs that are found in the feces of affected animals. Which of the following is not correct about their transmission? Direct person to person transmission can occur through coughing by infected person. Larvae can penetrate the skin if someone is walking in the contaminated soil by drinking contaminated water, by eating raw fruits and vegetables. Pica can also lead to infestation. A is the right option, yes, because there is no person to person transmission in these infestations. This is the key of MCQs, and thank you.